Hi, this is Alex Talopoli from Rhapsody of Fire, and you're listening to Metal Voice. Ciao, sono Alex Talopoli, di Rhapsody of Fire, e voi state ascoltando The Metal Voice. Here we are in the Metal Voice with the co-founder of Rhapsody of Fire, Alex Terapoli. Terapoli, buongiorno. Hey, how are you? Not bad. We're here to review the new album, Dark Wings of Steel. I'm listening to the new Rhapsody of Fire album and I, and I, I enjoyed it very much so. I, I thought the production was fantastic, Alex. I love the compositions, I love the orchestra. How did you record the orchestra? How did, did you have to bring them in the studio or was it recorded separately? Yeah, it was recorded separately. We we used the four studios for the Wings of Steel. We okay. recorded the drums in Germany. We recorded the vocals in my home. Yeah, and wow. we did the guitars, bass, and choirs in a friend of mine in a studio in Trieste. And uh, we recorded the, the their orchestra in uh, in a town called Scofie in Macedonia. Okay, okay. Eastern Europe in the south. And uh, I was not there, but I was uh, following the recording via Skype. I could see yes. uh, the orchestra and I could hear the sound via, via web, uh, very quality web st streaming audio. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I could hear everything, I could interact with the director, with the engineer. It was like being there, you know. Oh, so cool. it was very cool. Very exciting again to work with an orchestra. I mean, this was a huge, this is like uh, the making of Star Wars here. I mean, this is like <laughs> oh, huge. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> it, it was very good, you know. It I mean, was, uh, you don't see. Just three hour session, but uh, very concentrated, you know. Alex, you don't see too many bands today, you know. Um, you know, using orchestras anymore. You know, they're usually using the you know sound bites from the keyboards. Um, yeah. you, you don't see people doing that anymore. I mean, especially the costs. I mean, was this a huge cost to you to the band? No, no, it was not a huge cost. Uh, that's why I did it. Okay. Yeah, Actually, yeah. this orchestra uh, is formed by. Uh, hand pick up musicians, you know, so oh, okay. it's uh, it's not a cheap orchestra because the the players are cheap, you know. No, no, it's no. A cheap, it's a cheap orchestra because um, prices there are very good, but they are really very good players. So I prefer to use uh, uh, real sounds, you know. I prefer to save money in, from different things and to invest in an orchestra. Oh, exactly. The cost of studios in the past has been outrageous. Yeah. And oh now, now like you yeah, said, yeah. yeah, you can do I, it right out of your home. Uh, another standout uh, part of this album was uh, Fabio singing. I think Fabio is probably one of his best vocal performances. I don't know, It's maybe it's just me. I, I think he just had an, he did an out, a 10 out of 10 outstanding job singing, especially on the ballad, the Italian ballad. Yeah. What does it mean in English, the Italian ballad? What's, Castor what's di Pace. It means uh, peacekeeper. Oh, okay. okay, it's a wonderful ballad, and I mean, my God, yeah, it what is phenomenal. Imagine that the, the very first version of this song is actually the uh, the song called "A Candle to Light," extended version, which was the very first version of this song. Then I decided to try out uh, to to cut it and to make a ballad out of it. And it worked so good, you know, that I I decided to make it in Italian, in English, and in French. Okay. Yes. And uh, it was very cool. Like, in a sense, uh, Luca leaving was a good thing and a bad thing, right? I mean, it's it's another, it's a new chapter for Rhapsody of Fire. How do you feel about that? Well, the, the point is, um, the point of changing a little bit the sound is uh, something that I really needed, you know. So... Working with Luca, uh, I knew that he was uh, uh, really suffering to not be able to do uh, orchestra arrangements because I was doing the job, you know, as a keyboard player. He was taking care about many other things, like the, uh, all the guitars, the anyway, the, the lyrics, writing all the lyrics together with anyway produced the album. So it was a teamwork, but I know he was suffering 
to not be able to do orchestral arrangements the way he wanted, you know. So yeah. I felt the need to to do to compose actual songs, especially uh, to to create heavy guitars. I know many fans still they want want to hear the old uh, Rhapsody of Fire, uh, complicated and extremely polyphonic sound. This for Dark Queens of Steel, I didn't want to do that. They didn't want to do a very long song like a big suite or you know make narration and stuff like that. We did that for for yeah. 15 years, you know. So I wanted to do some an, uh, an album that is more organic. Right. Yeah. Well, well, and, and you're right. Some of the fans have found this album. Uh, they've struggled a little bit with it, but like Jimmy said, it, it's a brand new chapter for you. Yeah. I mean, this is not uh, definitive. This is not how all the next albums are going to sound. And I want to underline that for the uh, for the fans that uh, were yeah. totally into the saga, into the typical Rhapsody of Fire uh, sound. I mean, if I wanted, I could easily do uh, compose like uh, we did in the past you know to have a very huge uh, amount of uh, tracks and you know do a lot of uh, crazy stuff orchestration and bridges and long songs intros instrumental parts very long uh, um, uh, solos and you know i could do everything because this is in my hands you know but i didn't want to to copy what we already did in the past. Right. You know? you wanna, what was it like growing up in Italy in the 80s? As far as I remember, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, there was no scene there at all. There, there were a few bands, but uh, nothing compared to what we... What would you tell your parents? Mom, I want to be in a band. They go, what are you doing? <laughs> yes. <it was> the, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I, I, could, uh, I could accept a very good job. And I said, uh, but I had to cut my hair. So I said, mm, sorry, no fucking way. <laughs> I'm going to be a famous musician, you know, I was 17 or something, you know, and uh, the, the fact is that it sounds crazy, but uh, when I met with, with Luca the very first time, we started chatting and decided to compose music and become the first Italian heavy metal band yeah. to sell albums around the world, everybody was laughing, of course. But uh, we wanted to, to try, we felt that we had something to say, you know, and the music we were composing were convincing, you know, we were convinced to, to, do, to be on the right uh, track. And, and it's tough because back then, I mean, what I remember is there was no, you know, there's no labels, there's no promotion. No, it was a joke. It was a, it's like, it's impossible. It was like, I don't even yeah. know how you guys did it. You guys are pioneers. You guys we are, did a demo and we sent it all around Europe, especially in Germany, mainly in Germany, and yeah. the first uh, guy that answered was Lim Schnorr and from LMP, and he was totally, totally, he became a fan. Right. He became the fan number one, and uh, he did everything to protect the music we wanted to do and to do what we liked. You know? So we got some fan questions if you want to answer them. We got yeah, that sure. Nico from Netherlands. He goes, what guitar does Robbie uh, do Michele use because he really loves that sound, you know? Yeah, he's uh, endorsed by I Ibanez. Okay, and is uh, are you going to tour in the future? Are you guys going to go on a tour? Are you going to go to North America or are you just going to strictly tour in Europe? No, no, of course, we, we love to play in North America too, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a must, I would say. <laughs> When you recorded in Montreal your live album, how was that experience like? The venue was incredible. It was was the sound was so pure, so clean, yeah. and uh, we Montreal were very fans. lucky. You know, every everything was perfect, and we decided to release it, and it's great. You know, this this album was very well. Uh, uh, so it's all very well for a live album. That last one hour, it was a miracle. Right. It's, yeah, all, it's yeah. almost like a studio album. It's incredible. That's great. Did, now, did you did you target that specific performance in Montreal? You or you taped a, a many different uh, cities, and that's the one that sounded the best. No, no, this was the Montreal show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you you purposely that you targeted that and you had set up yeah. and everything. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Of course, you take a big risk when you record just one one show. Definitely, you know? yeah. Um, another question for Max in Canada, probably closer to Montreal. 
since your songs are a mixture of different styles, I mean, how do you proceed in your songwriting? How do you go about your songwriting process? Yeah, let's say that uh, with Luca, it, everything was connected to the saga, so it was uh, everything was on paper, and we start, we started from the story and writing the the title of the songs, and uh, starting from there, it was uh, kind of easy to have visions for what the musical aspect would be, you know. Yeah. yeah. Now for um, Dark Mist of Steel. I have had an approach which is kind of similar because I work with images too, you know. Sure. And uh, basically, it was very instinctive, but uh, of course, uh, in halfway instinct and um, and halfway organized. You know, I mean, it's a mixture of everything, but it's not really easy to explain, you know. Do you write the music all out on paper? Is that how you go? About no, it? no, 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 no. I write. I. I I start uh, uh, everything with the computer. I have my my own program and I start working there directly. You know, it's it's better. You know? It's a wonderful tool, isn't it? Just sorry, it's non-linear. Oh my it's... god, yes! In the beginning, I didn't want a computer. I was fighting with Luca because I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, we did legendary taste. It was completely done on on a sequencer uh, of a Korg uh, keyboard. You know, and then. For symphony, you know, it was a mix between a sequencer and some old Atari with MIDI. Atari. It was shit, you know. <laughs> and when when I started to buy, when I bought my first uh, Mac, I go, I went crazy, you know, because I said, wow, it's uh, really easy to use and I can really do what I want. Let me ask you a question. This is my question. Did you ever want to write a maybe like a pop melodic song, you know, for a change? Did you ever did that ever occur to you? Like, you know, I feel like writing a catchy sort of radio friendly three minute song, single. Three minute single. <laughs> I mean, you know, you write all these big symphonic pieces, and as an art, you know, as an artist, sometimes maybe you might think, you know, hey, you know what? Maybe nice to try a little pop rock song once in a while. I have a really wide. Uh background you know so sometimes yes i think about oh my god i should do this and that but uh, when i have this idea i'm never in front of the computer <laughs> and so when i'm back to the computer and with my schedule i just start to do heavy metal songs and i never try anything else and who would you say would be your biggest influence on your playing oh it's difficult to say that but uh, because i've listened to so many bands right so I think that uh, big influence was for sure uh, the, the movies that uh, I saw since I was a kid and the soundtrack and the classical music and of course uh, the power that a rock and heavy metal band can, can do, you know. The Rhapsody of Fire, Dark Wings of Steel. Uh, you can purchase it. I know you can get it in Canada, you can get it in North America, you can get it in Europe. It's a phenomenal album. I wish everybody goes out and picks up a copy. Uh, download it legally if you can't. Um, any uh, Anything you'd like to tell all the fans out there, Alex? Ready to go on tour and to play shows at any time. And uh, I hope to see you all. Right. There are lots of fans in North America and hopefully you'll make it over here and we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we are planning a tour right now and uh, hope we will do it in 2014. What's your website? It's uh, Rhapsody of Fire... Dot com. Yes. Dot com. Okay. Fire dot com and and yeah. on Facebook it's Rhapsody of Fire and mainly everything is, all the news are coming from there and of course from the AFM record website. Right. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much for being our guest today, Alex. Yeah, thank you very much for tuning in to the, the Metal Voice. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate your your videos and your uh, attitude. It's cool. Really thank you for the support. <laughs>